So um, I'm going to graph the exact same equation again, but I'm going to show you a different method because for every single one of your problems, you are going to have to show me both methods. So we're going to practice doing both methods. However you determine to graph it, that's up to you. All right, Because sometimes it might be easier to graph it one method than the other, but I am going to ask that I see both of that information, uh, Mackenzie, for you. Now, again, looking in this, uh, one thing I want to hammer home with you guys is that x and y intercepts. Remember, basically, where, where the x and y intercepts are, this is just a, a horizontal line, Ashley. It's just a horizontal line, right? Here's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? That's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, right? It's just, a, it's just a line graph, right? That's all it is. And then the y-intercept is the exact same thing, but it's just vertical. 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So what I want you to understand with this, and what's so like important about this, is when there is a point on the x-axis, what is the y value of that point? 0. So we can say the x-intercept, when a point lies on the x-intercept, y is equal to 0. And in the same respect, what about when there's a point on the y-axis? What is the x value? 0. So you can say that the y-intercept, x equals 0. All right. So that's very helpful. And I like using slope-intercept form. When I look at my coefficients, ax plus by equals c, you can easily visualize. When you look at a and b, are they, do they evenly divide into 15? Yeah. So when, they, when you have your a and b evenly divide into 15, then um, intercept method is fairly simple to be able to graph. And I'll show you why. So to find the intercept or the x-intercept, all I'm going to do is put y or 0 in for y. So I have 3x plus 5 times 0 equals 15. To find the y-intercept, I'm just going to put a 0 in for x. 3 times 0 plus 5 times y equals 15. You guys see what I did? Any questions on what I did? Because now, rather than having to rewrite it in slope-intercept form, plot the y-intercept, use the slope, if you guys understand the definition, because all we need, again, is two points. And the easiest two points usually defined on a line are the intercepts, because we know that one of the other values has to be 0. Actually, you have a question? Sure. Want to ask a good one? I'll answer it. Yeah, because remember, on this y-axis here, if I have point to put a line on this, I'm not going left or right, correct? So remember, x equals 0 is right here. If I go to the right, x equals 1. If I go to the left, x equals negative 1. But if I stay here, I can go up or down where x is still 0. But I'm going to have a y value. So if I'm trying to find the y-intercept where it crosses the y value, I'm not moving left or right. That's why x is equal to 0. And the same thing, when I'm trying to find the x-intercept, where this graph crosses here, I haven't gone up or down. So y is going to equal 0. OK, Paige? Now, the next thing is I'll just set 3x is equal to 15. Because any times you multiply a number times 0, just going to be 0. So I have 3x is equal to 15. Reuben, that's Reuben, Reuben, Reuben. What you do is you take 5 times 0 is just going to be 0. So you have 3x equals 15. Divide by 3, divide by 3 x equals 5. Over here, I divide by 5, divide by 5, y equals 3. Now, we know each of these values. Go ahead and plot them. x equals 5, and y equals 3. So now, I have my two points. It's not the y-intercept and this point that I found using the slope. It's the y-intercept and the x-intercept. Done. OK? Now, a lot of times, slope, a lot of times, intercept method is helpful, and I'm going to have you guys do it for every single problem. Um, however,